Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy of Anti-Money Laundering. In this video, I'm going to talk about ChatGPT and the possible use of this tool to prevent money laundering. But what is ChatGPT? Well, it's an AI, it's a large language model. It's built on open AI. It has learning algorithms trying to generate human-like responses um, depending on a vast amount of data. So we know right now the data is limited and is not on real-time data, uh, total access to all the internet, but this is like a working model, our first model that is actually open to everyone. It does have some good features and therefore we need to learn this tool because this is kind of the new Google. It, it is a new kind of browsing system that can collect data and help you in the search of information or even generate responses to, for example, just an everyday email. But how can we use this language model to prevent money laundering? Well, I asked ChatGPT itself to come up with three kind of like main subjects where it can help uh, in the prevention of money laundering and also three common restraints like boundaries on where are the limits of using ChatGPT. Uh, just before this question on how can it prevent, I put up here the best case scenario because let's face it, it is also a computer answering um, and there are some deficiencies in its answer, but I will just present the answers that it actually came out with because they are quite interesting. So ChatGPT says that it can help transaction uh, monitoring transactions. Of course, now in the answer, it says that it can help this monitoring in real time data. And that is not the case right now. But we can see that many banks are trying to automize and do this machine learning where we can do real-time you know, transaction monitoring. So if we can start having this technology and maybe have it publicly available uh, to banks and everyone else in the prevention of money laundering um, kind of framework, well, that would be a really large step for us. Especially, and that is why I highlighted here, when we come with regards to transactions in high risk countries or individuals, because let's just face it, we cannot talk all languages in the world and we might be limited in our human processes to, to kind of understand what is happening in which countries and really know our customers if they're on the other side of this planet. Here, of course, this technology, if it has access, um, to real-time data, it will be able to collect everything of a company or other kind of um, clients and also help us understand the risk culture of these countries. So it is kind of just a new, it's a new browsing system, say like Google times 10 million. We will be able to get data that will make it much better for us in our KYC processes and our onboarding procedures. Of course, here it, it highlights transaction monitoring. We will put a question mark to that answer. The second part is the risk assessment. So I already like kind of reflected on this. It does say that it can help in the assessment of risk because it can help securing um, information on customer profiles and how, like who have they maybe cooperated with in history in the uh, in like 10 years ago and this might tell us something about a certain company and this is amazing because if we put in all information and give it access to real-time data, but also historical data, what we would be able to see is we are trying to onboard, for example, um, a, a corporate client, we will be able to see any press release overall in the internet with any partnering of, with this company. And it will be much easier to do this risk assessment because we would be able to see so who are the partners? Who did they sign up with? What are the type of clients that they are trying to work with? And this may 
it makes it much easier to do this risk assessment and customer profiling. So in this sense, I do see some really good uh, value in using AI and LLM like ChatGPT. The third like good reason or argument for using this to prevent and where it can be a tool to prevent money laundering that it highlights is, uh, is regarding the regulation. So compliance monitoring. If when we have real time data, we will be able to also to ask these extremely good kind of tools, AI tools to find relevant um, regulation kind of like highlight the last types of regulation where what has what is the new recommendations within an area and it will be able to collect everything and give you the links give you a summary kind of refreshing and putting everything on point for you and hereby limiting your lack of knowledge or your let's just face it, human restraints to collect that much knowledge or browse your way through EU regulations. This is what these, this, these kind of machines, this type of AI technology can do for you. So here again, it is a great tool to collect information, brief you on it and kind of expand your field of knowledge, expand your comprehension of what is out there regulatory wise and what do we need to comply with. You could even see if there are some recommendations or something and test your own strategy upon this, doing it the other way around saying, okay, when our strategy is pointing out these, depending on these numbers, would you say, uh, would there be any recommendations that would not, that this strategy would not comply with? And it might have access to a lot of data and can give you an answer or at least a reflection, a peer review on your statement. So that was kind of the upside. Let's look at the downside of ChatGPT and other AI sources, other uh, large language models. The first one is data quality and it states itself the accuracy of ChatGPT. We know that the data until now is restrained to 2021 so it is incomplete and it might be inaccurate and you can see that you should always check the um, you should also always check the validity of the data by asking for links hyperlinks to this data but of course if you're doing it in 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 information gathering, you would also need that confirmation and verification of your information to use that in your risk assessment. So just don't always trust data, always verify it. The second restraint is that it might be a bit biased. And But how can it be biased? Well, we have to learn the restraints of this open AI source. When this technology might be biased, it's because it's collect data from everywhere, from all over the internet. And this data, if the data is biased by itself, because the type of person who kind of put in the data, who wrote uh, the blog post, who wrote the analysis, if this person is biased by itself, then the result will also be biased and that might bias the result generated by these large language models and that could be we've seen examples of kind of a, a racist bias it can be demographic regional also age biased so we have to just remember that whatever data we get out here we have to assess it again objectively and and kind of reflect on possible biases in the uh, result that these kind of AI engines and this technology can give us. A third restraint is, of course, legal and ethical consideration. It has to always limit itself from ethical considerations and also the legal, because it is not the responsibility of the chat GPT or other sources to tell if you are in compliance with anything. That is the responsibility of, for example, a financial institution. What you can use these tools for, for is information gathering. 
it is a new level of browsing it is but you still have to do the work so you can do some peer, you can check out if your strategy holds, just get some reviews, but it will never be able to tell you if you comply with the law. That is what we have judges for and a court system. Overall, I do believe that this technology is a new level. We can use it to prevent money laundering because we can get access to data in countries that we didn't even know that these maybe customers had relationships to or other sources of information. And it just opens a world of magnificent knowledge sharing and knowledge gathering. But be aware, and this is again to the bias system and to the restraints. If the tool is that good, remember that when we talk about money laundering, the tool will also be accessible for your counterpart. And they may be voluntarily or like on purpose trying to bias the data that you may gather from using the language model. So just be aware that you always have this double-sided use and therefore we always have to verify our data in the collection and account for biases, no matter how we work with these tools to prevent money laundering. But it is something that we can use and we will use it in the near future. So this was just a short video on ChatGPT and this type of large language model, how we can use them in the prevention of money laundering. Stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, and let's talk much more about money laundering and the prevention of it.